Homework number 25 is all about quadratic functions. Now we've seen a lot of this already, um, but we're looking at it just from the algebraic perspective, not, you know, here's this and graph it, although we will be graphing. Uh, there are a lot of things we want to be able to get from this. Uh, your intercepts, your vertex, your axis of symmetry. So if I look at number one, number one is already set up in that perfect form for me to identify lots of things. First, I'm going to pick off the vertex. So the vertex is going to be the opposite of what you see here. So that means we're moving to the left two, we're moving down three. My axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals negative two, whatever this x coordinate for the vertex is. So you can go ahead and start with that. Negative two, negative three is a vertex. My line of symmetry is going to be going through this guy right here. Now, understand that since you have a negative one half here, you're going to be opening upside down. If I'm opening upside down, I won't have any x-intercepts. So don't say no solution. You would just say that there are there are none. Now you can also go through the whole process of setting this equal to zero. If you set this equal to zero and try to solve it, you'd have a positive 3 on the other side, divide by the negative, you're going to end up with a square equal to a negative, which would only lead you to imaginary numbers. And that's not going to work and give you anything resembling x-intercepts, not in the real number plane anyway. Now the y-intercept, this is always when x is 0. It doesn't matter what you're working with. So if I plug in 0 here, okay, imagine plugging 0 in for this guy. 0 plus 2 is 2, so 2 squared is 4, so you have negative 1 half times 4 minus 3. So 2 goes in here twice, and this gives you negative 5. Now hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully we do end up hitting here at negative 5. Okay. Now, there's your y-intercept, but since you have this line of symmetry, you can reflect it across the line of symmetry, and have another point here. Now, I think we know enough about these parabolas to get other points. So if I went out 1 squared, 1 squared would be 1, but the 1 half means I'm going to do half of that. Reflect that across the line of symmetry. 2 squared is 4, but half of 4 is 2. Ah, so that matches up. My y-intercept makes sense. If I go out 3, 3 squared is 9, half of 9 is 4.5 and I can reflect that back over here. So this is this is my parabola. No x-intercepts, but that's okay. But every parabola will have a y-intercept. Every func every quadratic function will have a y-intercept. Well, let's see about the next problem. This next problem is not set up in the form that we like. So we're going to have to go about finding the vertex and putting it in the form that's uh, useful to us. So there are a lot of different ways we have of doing this. You can complete the square. Uh, you could use the vertex formula. It all ends up in the same place. If I use the vertex formula, okay, so you remember for the vertex, that would be the order pair negative b over 2a. And then you would plug that x-coordinate into your function to get the y-coordinate. So if I do that, so the x is going to be negative b over 2a. Negative b, so my b here is 8. Negative 8 over 2a. a is 1, so that's 2. And that gives me negative 4. So that means for my vertex, I know that my x-coordinate is negative 4. And my y-coordinate, well, I would just plug this in. So I would figure out what is f of negative 4. That's negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 15. So 16 minus 32 plus 15 all of this is equal to negative 1. 
So if that's your vertex, your axis of symmetry just kind of falls out from that. So x would equal negative 4. Remember, the axis of symmetry is, the, is, is a line, so you must give it as an equation of a line. In this case, x equals negative 4. To find your y-intercept, plug in x is 0. When x is 0, you get 15. Kind of a bummer, because that doesn't fit on my graph. Uh, the x-intercept. The x-intercept is what happens when you set this equal to 0. When you set that equal to 0, and you factor this, you would have x plus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. That means x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 5. So you have two x-intercepts. Negative 3, 0. And negative 5, 0. So we have enough information to put all this on the graph, so let's see what we have. You have a vertex at negative 4, negative 1. Your x-intercepts are negative 3, 0, negative 5, 0, which is good for us because they are symmetric about this line of symmetry. If they weren't, we would be in serious trouble. Now you could plug in other points to get, or plug in other values of x to get extra points. Or you can recognize that this is a 1 here. Since this is a 1, it's going to have that nice parabolic shape, the normal guy. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And you can reflect these guys back over here. And just nicely connect these guys. There you go. Now the other way of doing this is to actually take this and complete the square. So I'm going to do this over here on the, on the right side. If I take f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 15, and I complete the square. Well, this is x squared plus 8x. plus 15. Now I haven't changed anything, I've just kind of regrouped some things because the 15 doesn't help me with completing the square. I'll get to him in a moment. I expect this guy to factor something squared. Well, what is that something? And we've, been do we've done this before. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. But I can't just put plus 16 in here. That changes the problem. I also have to subtract 16. See, plus 16 minus 16 is 0, so I haven't changed the problem. Now, the problem with all of this, though, is that this is the only stuff that I actually need to get here. So this negative 16 combines with the 15, and that gives me... Well, that's embarrassing. That just gives me a negative 1. So we'll just pretend we didn't see this. There we go. So this is a minus 1. Now, had there been a coefficient out here, you would have multiplied it times this before it comes on the outside. But since this is just a 1, 1 times negative 16 is negative 16, plus 15 is negative 1. And when we write it this way, you can see that everything matches up. Your vertex from this form would be negative 4, negative 1. Same thing I have here. The coefficient here is a 1, so it's going to have that nice, normal parabolic shape opening up.